Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome once again to the WP Builds Podcast. You've reached episode number 298, entitled Make Your Website Voice Enabled with ConvoWorks. It was published on Thursday, the 6th of October, 2022. My name's Nathan Wrigley and just a tiny bit of housekeeping before we begin. First thing to say is if you enjoy WP Builds, please feel like sharing it. In whatever way you feel fit, our Twitter handle is at WP Builds. And of course, feel free to just share it on any social platform that you like. The URL for the website is WPBuilds.com. And if you really want to go the extra mile, we would appreciate some reviews on your podcast player of choice. Apple Podcasts seems to be a popular way of reviewing the podcast. That would be most welcome. Thank you very much. Another couple of things, if you are into WP Builds and you want to keep up with what we do, head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe and you will find all of the ways that you can keep in touch. We have just launched our Black Friday page. It's a popular destination each and every year. You will be able to find increasingly large amounts of deals over there. I'm already in contact with various plugin and theme developers to see what kind of deals we can get onto that page. You're going to find it at wpbuilds.com forward slash black. That's wpbuilds.com forward slash black. Once again, if you feel like sharing that, I'd be most grateful. And keep checking back, bookmark it. And as the days roll towards Black Friday, hopefully there'll be more and more deals on there. If you are a product owner and you would like to sponsor that page, you'll see a section at the top where we're going to be putting our promoted posts. And if you fancy joining the conversation about that and you want to get your product up there, then there's some buttons on the website, yellow buttons. Click on those and let me know. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by GoDaddy Pro. GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL and 24-7 support. Bundle that with The Hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more by going to go.me forward slash WP builds. That's go.me forward slash WP builds. And we sincerely thank GoDaddy Pro for their continuing support of the WP builds podcast. Okay, so on the podcast today, we have Tihomir Dimitrovich. He is from ConvoWorks, and ConvoWorks is a new graphical user interface to allow you to create things so that... Okay, on the podcast today, we have Tihomir Dimitrovich. He's here from ConvoWorks, and it's all about voice interactions this time around. He has got a product. It's a graphical user interface to allow you to create complicated things so that your website can interact via voice. It all sounds very curious. It's very difficult to explain. And so in the show notes, I've allowed Tihamir to do that. But in the podcast, he goes into how it all works, how you can get your devices in your home to interact with your website. What kind of scenarios might this be useful? It's definitely not going to be for every website and there are specific use cases which are recommended but it's a fabulous interesting episode and probably I would imagine we're staring into the future here somewhat. I hope that you enjoy it. I am joined on the podcast today by Tihomir Dimitrovich. Hello. Hello Nathan, nice to be here. Yeah really we've had a we've had a couple of attempts at this we've had audio problems and all sorts but we've fought on through them and we're going to talk today about well a, a really interesting part of the technology landscape and that is voice enabled services and uh, T. Homier is a bit of an expert in this he works with I don't know if it's a founder of but there's a company called Convo Works and right at the outset of this podcast I'm going to go and say check out convoworks.com that's c o n v o 
W-O-R-K-S.com. Um, that will probably get rid of some of the clouds, some of the mystery at the beginning uh, in terms of what we're going to talk about. But firstly, um, Tiamid, would you mind just telling us a little bit about who you are, what it is that you've been doing in technology over the recent times, and how come you've got a WordPress thing? Why WordPress in particular? Well, basically, uh, I'm in love with the computers through all my life since I first <laughs> get my hands on first video game. I said, I want to be a computer engineer. <laughs> and once I finished the college, uh, I had a chance and uh, started working immediately in the web development. At that time, it was called Fusion. Uh, uh, but basically, through, through, through all my career, uh, I was working in the web. Uh, through various technologies. I was also working in JSP and Java, uh, but uh, I settled down in PHP. Uh, I like uh, that lightness that PHP has. Uh, and once those CMS, uh, CMS uh, frameworks uh, that they started rising through 2000s, uh, for me, WordPress was uh, a... <laughs> from the early days, a uh, very, very clear choice to wait to go. Uh, in the times when it was just something like uh, holding about 10% of the market. Uh, WordPress is uh, just great thing to work with. It's, uh, yeah. it's definitely grown a lot since then, hasn't it? Back in the day when, yeah. when it was 10%, it kind of felt like it was already dominating. And now we're into the, the low 40s. Yeah, it was definitely with good luck and a bit of coincidence there. I think we, we both picked the right platform. But um, we're not here to talk about WordPress per se, although WordPress is going to feature very heavily later on in the conversation, I think, because... Um, what you've built is completely compatible with WordPress via a plugin. But we're here today to talk about the, the opportunity, which probably most of us have not taken much account of. And that is the idea of enabling voice services on your website. Now, I confessed to you just before we hit record that I am probably not super qualified to hold this conversation because I do have some of those devices in my home. You, you know, we've got the likes of Google and Amazon and Apple and Microsoft. They've all got different products that you can speak to. But I have, for reasons that I don't quite understand, I've never really gotten into doing things with them. At best, I ask it to turn up the volume or turn down the volume to music that might be playing. But I don't book appointments. I don't ask it challenging questions. I don't seek facts and things like that on it. But I know that all of these things are possible. Would you just like to paint a picture of where we're at right now? What what is the What are the capabilities that these these technologies from these companies can do because I don't know if I'm normal or abnormal in not using them very much. So uh, important thing to know about this kind of technologies, particularly about smart speakers, it's quite much similar like when you are buying a smartphone. So when you buy a smartphone, uh, first you have to have an account with this plan or you, are, you, you just uh, bought or Apple or Google. Uh, and when you firstly initial, uh, when you start your device, it's already, already shipped with, I don't know, a couple of dozens of applications which are built in into it. And then you have, uh, then you have application store when you can add more features, more application from custom providers. So, Basically, that's the same thing with smart speakers. When you buy them, you have to enable it to connect that with your account. And uh, they are shipped with quite a lot of built-in features. You can ask them uh, various questions and uh, they have support for them. But there is also that possibility to third-party developers to develop own applications uh, in the term of uh, Amazon Alexa, they are called Alexa skills. And you can uh, create your application, uh, upload 
uh, register that on the App Store and the end users can enable your applications. So the I guess the thing there that I find curious is that in most cases I discover that a particular application is available in voice through a visual interface. So as an example, when I open up the Google Home app on my phone, it will kind of indicate to me that, look, did you know that you can ask questions of Spotify? So I have a Spotify account and I can ask the speaker to play me songs, but I kind of wouldn't have known that unless I went into the phone and saw it on the phone. I, you know, I was able to visually make the connection between Spotify and now my speakers. And the, the same may be true for other services. I'm, I'm not so sure. The, the point being that I, I was able to see that somewhere. And I guess I guess the, the difficult thing for me is that if we're trying to, and we'll get into this in a minute, if we're trying to enable a voice type services on websites, how would anybody know that your website, let, let's create a fictional business. Let's say that I am a dentist in my local town. I have a WordPress website already. And I would like to make it possible for people to book my appointments via the voice app, you know, the voice technology sitting in their kit people's kitchens. How would they know that that the the booking system was available through voice? Where where does that discoverability come from? Well, uh, you will uh, certainly do some uh, blog post or a newsletter sent to your already. To, to your customers you already have. You already have your users, right? Yep. And okay, you are uh, contacting me usually through the website, you are contacting me uh, through mobile, through the phone line, which is not that much op uh, optimal solution, right? Uh, web is better and okay, hey, my users, uh, here is the new uh, ability. If you have uh, Alexa enabled device, now you can uh, uh, check your reservations or create new booking uh, uh, with uh, your smart speaker. Yeah, I, I guess it's akin to when the internet started. At that time, if I wanted to book my local dentist, I phoned them up. 100% of the time, I would phone them up and make the reservation. And without really thinking about it, over the last 20 years, all of that has moved online. And I now would assume that I could book my appointment for the dentist online. Uh, you know, I, I've never been uh, contacted by them to do it that way. I've just sort of grown accustomed to everything moving in that direction. And I guess in a sense, that's, th that's your hope, is that voice will become so ubiquitous, so common that people will start to assume that they can book their local dentist or whatever it might be because it's just become more and more popular yeah it will it it, it will uh it will come through the time but as i said uh, one of the easiest way uh to 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 overcome that is just uh, for example, next time when you are booking appointment, you will see badge. Okay, also available right. as Alexa skill. Yeah. So I don't think um, there is too much philosophy about that. Yeah, that's interesting as well. And I wonder if I wonder if in the future Google and other search engines will will present some kind of a badge, as you say, on the search results to say that you know from from now on, if you wish to do this over here. I don't know. I don't know if it's in Google's interest to promote uh, voice, but again, we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. So what are the kind of things that you can actually do online? Like I said, my experience is very limited. I can turn the music up. I can turn the music down. I can ask questions and so on and so forth, but I haven't really pushed the boundaries. I haven't explored the sort of things that you can do with voice. So would you mind just painting a picture of the kind of things that are possible now and maybe even sort of stray into the future and, and tell us a bit about what might be possible in the near future? So these couple of use cases you mentioned uh, are uh, falling into that category of the built-in features, what they already have. And uh, what they already have by themselves uh, 
creating some uh, searches on the Google or those huge uh, music providers or smartphones. So this, this is all that category of the built-in stuff. Uh, but basically, whatever you are doing for the website, you can translate that and have that on the voice. Theoretically, everything. It's the same technology, right? Uh, user gives some inputs, uh, system uh, gets that, do some validation, okay, maybe you have to correct some values, and then uh, it uh, inserts that into system or uh, queries the system to give you results. Basically, everything what you are doing through the web. So at the moment, um, the, the only expectation that I would have if I asked Google something on my home device, but, you know, the same could be true of Amazon and Apple and what have you. The only expectation I have of, of discovering a website is literally reading out content. So, you know, I may ask a question about cats and then Google will tell me that on this website they say and then they'll, you know, literally read out some scraped um, content. So in that way, we're just sort of reading out the text on the page. But obviously, the web is evolving and is much more complicated. You know, there's forms. We can book all sorts of appointments. We can ask, um, fill out contact details and, you know, and hope to get emails in return. And there's lots and lots of complexity. You're saying all of that in the future. So filling out forms, booking things, asking questions and so on and so forth. You're saying all of that will become available um, either now or in the near future. No, <laughs> no, yep. no, you can actually, it's, it's just question of the convenience. If you have something you're entering data and if it requires, I don't know, uh, 10, 10 I dozen uh, items of the data, then it's maybe too much hassle to do that through the walls, right? Right, yeah. So a, a perfect example of that would be I've just, I've just re redone my car insurance and, oh, I don't know, that form probably had about 50 fields that I had yeah. to click on. You know, I had to agree to this and I had to type in the registration number and I had to say how many years I'd owned the car and all of this. Clearly, the expectation is that probably that's out of bounds. You know, it's going to be too tricky to to keep track of what you've done so far. But in, in more straightforward cases, you're saying that all of this is possible right now. OK, that's interesting. So if it is possible, if all of this is possible now, why do we not see it all over? What, why, why are people not engaging in this en masse? Uh, everybody sh why is everybody not doing it? Is it because the implementation at the minute is too difficult? Yeah, it's, it's quite a different technology. It's quite a different technology. Uh, it requires, uh, it, it, it consists of some strange new keywords uh, what they are using into that and basically it's all cloud-based technology and uh, it's not that much simple it's not that much simple uh, and uh, especially for the classic web developers Right. So the likes of Spotify with their billion dollar industry, they can they can do this because they can they can employ staff who are highly technical and the, their enterprise is just to make search work with these smart speakers. But s smaller organizations, you know, my local dentist or whatever it may be. The technical barriers to that are too difficult. There's new things to learn. It's complicated. It's new. It's hard. And so is that what Convo Works is trying to do? Are you trying to bridge the gap between that complexity and, you know, the, the possibilities of having voice? Is that, that yeah. the point? It's a bridge. Exactly that. Voice for the menaces. Okay. Oh, nice. I like it. That's a nice little strap line. So, okay. Tell us. What it is, if we if we were to go to Convo Works and we get involved with your products, what is it that we're doing? How do we how do we see that in our WordPress website? What are the steps that we need to go through? And I know that's going to be really difficult because we're having to describe things which are going to be very visual in nature, I imagine. But just walk us through the process that we might have. Um, and let's pick out a use case, and you can come up with one yourself, but I'm going to suggest something like a booking system or something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important to, to, to <clears throat> point out 
Right now, we are mostly concentrated on Amazon Alexa. So I will talk uh, just about Amazon Alexa. That's fine. Right now. So when you install uh, Convert, uh, first thing is to connect uh, your installation with your Amazon developer account. You have to have Amazon uh, account. Uh, if you have Alexa devices, you also have to have that. It's the same account. Okay. And the first thing is uh, to connect your installation with the Amazon. It's classic uh, open authentication protocol. Uh, you have to enter some data on the Amazon side, some data on our side. Uh, we have hints, so you can just copy paste that and enter on the Amazon side. Uh, you connect that, and uh, in after that, uh, we are able to uh, remotely manage your uh, future Alexa skills from your WordPress installation. So, so you, you don't have to go on Amazon site anymore. Okay, so the, the, the primary thing you need, and we'll stick to Amazon, that's fine, is an Amazon developer account, and you basically connect the two bits, and from that moment on, we're in WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then, so you, you mentioned skills. This is a word which I've heard before, but I'm, I'm not really familiar with, with, with what the scope of skills are. Just Just briefly run through that what is a skill is that is that kind of well i'll let you explain application yeah it's it's a voice application they just call that skill it's actually quite convenient name uh and what's important with the skill is that it has your it, it has its own invocation name so when you are trying to interact with that skill you will say something like uh alexa open wp bills it's it's and on everybody's then, lips. Everybody's going to be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to name it, and there is also tricky part on that. Uh, if you if you if you have some strange name, or there can be a problem, so you have to tune it up. Uh, what's okay. most uh, practical for your users? Okay. All right. So I'm I'm beginning to understand a little bit more. So the skills they're created by Amazon. And you have access to them. Um, no, no, you are creating sorry, those skills. Sorry, I, I apologise. My application. Yeah, John's sorry. Dentist, for yep. example. Um, okay, so I think I misspoke there. I, I said words that I didn't mean to say. What I what I mean is is that the the capabilities that the skills can have are created by Amazon. In other words, you're, you're interacting with things that are pre-designed by Amazon. So you can do things within that application, but they're bound by what Amazon has already built. Um, no. Okay. Uh, they have framework. They have framework how to create that skill. They have also a user interface when you can enter that and uh, they have own way how to do that. Uh, for example, default way how you are implementing logic for your uh, Alexa skill is in AWS uh, Lambda uh, in the cloud. And they are doing that mostly in Node.js. Okay, okay. Uh, but basically, as I said, it's, it's a framework. Uh, it's a framework and uh, most important thing in that uh, what they have uh, what they are offering there is uh, you are actually grouping uh, utterances, example phrases that your user can say. And you are grouping them into something that is called intent, user intent. And uh, when uh, you have the skill, user said, so says something to that skill. Uh, what Amazon is doing actually is matching uh, one of those examples you provided. Okay, I found that example. Uh, it is a schedule appointment intent, and they trigger the web hook on your handler with uh, that information. User said he wants to schedule appointment. Okay, so that's really interesting. So you're grouping these 
intentions, these intents. And so presumably you would go in, with, let's, let's take the booking example, you, you would go in and fill it up with all of the possible variations that you can think of. So schedule appointment, book something, make an appointment, all of the possible variations that people could say, and you would then group them together under this, this intent of, okay, schedule something. And then Amazon would return well, you said from from a webhook, it would return something which then which then leads you down another another path later in the conversation. Yeah, exactly. And does Amazon um, does it off does it bring its sort of AI to bear on this? In other words, if there's no direct exact match for booking, let's say I just I don't know stumble over the words or have a curious and unusual way of saying that phrase. Is Amazon intelligent enough to go, okay, I think the intention there was to book something. Let's go in that direction. Yes, uh, they are doing quite a good job on that. Okay. It's always better to have more examples, uh, but they are also interpolating that and uh, they are giving quite good results. Yeah, and I'm imagining over time with the quantity of data that they're getting, they're probably modeling that better and better as the years go by. So the chances of, of going wrong are pretty small. If... If at this point, though, there is a there is a, a moment of confusion where Amazon doesn't really know what to do with the phrase that you said, what, what do we do at that point? Do we have to design an intent for we're not sure what's going on, or is it possible to return something yeah. which just just sort of yeah. says I don't know? Let's can you can you say that again or something? Yes, uh, they send you, for example, a fallback intent. They couldn't match anything, uh, and then we'll say send you on your web hook again a fallback intent. And then you can respond with, okay, sorry, I didn't understand that. Please say this or this. Okay, so I've just had what I think is a bit of an epiphany. And that is to say, it, this feels to me a lot like when I... So the chat um, bots that we've seen all over the internet where you can, you know, you click on the little icon in the bottom right of the website and it opens up. And you're obviously not chatting with a human, but you are interacting with something, some little robot. And you type in a response, it gives you something back. And, and essentially what you're embarking on is a journey a, a, a along a massive tree diagram where what you reply leads you in one direction and if you pl reply in a different way you go in another direction is that basically what we're doing if we were to look at your system is it essentially a massive tree diagram with choices of where to go given responses yeah Basically, it's the classic programming. Okay, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I've got a, got a grip on that. Okay, let, let's go a little bit deeper into this. What are the kind of things that, what are the kind of intentions that we're able to use? We've, we've mentioned uh, booking. I, you know, I'm, I'm aware that I can turn the volume up, turn the volume down, and so on and so forth. But what are the kind of intentions that are available, if that's the right word? No, you, you can actually type uh, what, what, Whatever you want, whatever whatever makes sense uh, for your end users. I think I think therefore I'll rephrase that question. What are the kind of things in Convo Works you mm -hmm. can do to guide that conversation? So obviously, if if we hear somebody express an intent to book something, that takes us in the the booking uh, direction. What are what are the other things that what are the other directions that we go in can go in? <laughs> Really, whatever you usually want for from some website. Uh, for example, uh, how many uh, new comments do I have today? For example, are there any replies to my comment uh, or to my blog post? Uh, are there any reviews uh, on these products or something like that? Really, whatever you would like to do with your web, you can uh, just. Uh, if you can say that and phrase that, you can type in that kind of examples, catch them, and uh, a response with uh, appropriate information. Yeah, I'm guessing the there's a you know the SEO industry is massive. Um, because people want to optimize their content incredibly well, so it's surfaced by search engines, but also just so that it's easy to easy for a human to read. 
And I'm just wondering if the, if there's a bit of that at play here as well. Do, you know, presumably it would be quite easy to go through your UI and get yourself in a bit of a muddle. There's probably quite a lot of work to be done in the in the beginning to figure out how this tree diagram is going to look and carefully manage expectations and phrase questions in a certain way so that it, it's obvious what the next thing to do is. Uh, basically, what we uh, actually tried do with the converts, uh, we tried to make it as much more similar to building a website. So uh, once you open the uh, converts and uh, we have uh, something like a dozen templates of already ready to use uh, Alexa skills, all services, how we are going that in the converts, you will see on the right hand, it's something like Siteware. And uh, you are something like building a web page. If you are on the Contact Us web page, you cannot search products on that page, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is something like that. You have stages in the conversation, and we have, uh, this is not no-code tool, right? We haven't mentioned that yet. Mm -hmm. It's a no-code tool, you have components, you are drag and drop, uh, using drag and drop uh, to place them uh, into a particular place. Uh, you have properties pop up uh, to adjust uh, how they should behave. Uh, and uh, that's it, like building the website. So um, let, let's just talk about the UI because we haven't mentioned that so far. And it is, as you described, it's a drag and drop UI. Just talk us through how we would, how, what are we presented with and how do we actually build these, um, these, these routines, I'm going to call them. Mm -hmm. So basic thing what we have uh, in our uh, conversation mechanism is called step. So steps through conversation. This is something like sitemap. So uh, we usually have home. Uh, this is the first one. When someone opens the skill, uh, this is what we will inform the end user. Okay, welcome to our skill. You can do that, that, and that. And then we are waiting for the user response. Uh, and sorry, go on. When user response, he uses his skill on that step and we are catching intent. Uh, once we catch intent, expected intent, uh, we are using go to component and we are moving focus on some another step in the conversation. And then again, on that step, we have that in the initial phase when we are saying, okay, you choose that uh, part of our conversation, now we are expecting you to say uh, which day you want to schedule appointments or which time, for example. And then we are waiting. And user is on that step uh, uh, scheduling a date. And okay, so what I'm imagining then is a UI where you've got the, the option to drag in uh, different things and then bind them to other things. And then, you know, like you said, if you say you want to book an appointment, then you, you hop, you go to the next step and, and the, the, the website, if you like, just waits for a, another response and so on and so forth. And yeah. we just keep going through until we've succeeded and done whatever it is that we want to do. What do we do in the event where... Like, because there's quite a lot of pausing, isn't there? Does it just sort of sit there and wait for a response? And if nothing happens, does it reset itself or does it ask for mm. the information again? In other words, how do we, how do we get so, people to go through our lead magnet all the way to the end? So here is one, one thing uh, of, of basic concepts. Uh, once you start the skill, it's called the session. Again, something similar to web development. It's called a session. And uh, uh, it's, it has, session has turns. Uh, first device says something, then expects user to say something. Uh, and there is a mechanism uh, we have on, uh, when we are developing those skills, we have also a prompt. If the user doesn't reply in uh, one minute, we will send him a reprompt. And uh, it can be the same message as uh, initially, but it can be uh, another message. Okay, please tell me that information. 
Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm. I'm starting to. I'm starting to get it a, a little bit more now. This is. This is really interesting. And so, again, if we have time out, then session will end. For right. Second time. Right. If we don't time handle it, session ends, and a user will have to start the skill again. Okay. And okay. So on the on the web, if I'm looking on my screen, I can sort of see that. Usually, I get some sort of prompt which says session is timed out. Do you do do, do you typically warn? the user that the session is about to time out or when they come back and no. finally say the 18th of June at 9am, please, it just sort of says, uh, n no, we're right at the start again and we have to begin again. Uh, so it's again on, uh, on the developer. Okay, I, okay. Can, I can store that data, what we had uh, from, uh, from before, I can store that in uh, some uh, persistence. Uh, we have several scopes. We have a uh, session scope, uh, so you can persist uh, data through the session, but we also have uh, installation scope. So the data will be preserved uh, on that device all the time. And we also have user scope. So uh, it's tied to your user account. So it will be remembered on any device which is tied to your account. It's interesting as well. I just suddenly GDPR came into my head just then, and um, and obviously if you're I don't know send would do you ever even give your email address across this kind of thing? Is there any sensitive data that's possibly flying over here, and do we need to be mindful of that? You know, uh, what what if we what if we pick up something um, which is not intended to be said? You know, and and it, it somehow gets consumed by the website. Where is it all being stored? In other words, where's the data being held? Uh, okay, so a uh, couple of thing, things here. Uh, first, uh, when Amazon sends uh, that information to your webhook, you are getting just intent. And there are also one another thing, it could be slot values. For example, if I'm expecting the date, yep. uh, then I will have slot called date and I will get the actual date. Uh, but we don't have the exact text what user said. So Interesting. this is quite important. We okay. just we just uh, we just have that resolution what came out. So it's parsed the... it's parsed by Amazon and and they only send yeah. you the bit. And so the the GDPR bit, if you like, is that mainly on them? Mm, or something like that. Uh, but you can ask the user for his information. What's I'm just another curious question. What's in this for Amazon? Why 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 are they building all this out? You know what what is the because it's a business, right? And if they're doing all of this, and presumably maybe there's a fee. I don't know. Maybe you have to pay a fee per query or an annual developer fee or something like that. What what's in this for Amazon? Is it just a are they just sweeping up data um, and giving away a service for free? Well. Uh they are selling the smart speakers, that's for sure. Yeah. And the Fire TVs and all this stuff. So it's a, actually a huge ecosystem, what they are having. And uh, they just released a couple of months ago uh, a robot who that's drives right. around your house, yeah, Astro, yeah. right? And they purchased the Roomba. Yeah, now that's an interesting play, isn't it? Because yeah, they're so going to have an awful lot of data about the shape and size of your house because of that. They're, they're playing a huge game, right? So when you're doing these custom skills, these default uh, regular custom skills, it's all free. It's all free uh, for you. Ah, uh, you can monetize your skill through Amazon. So uh, you, your users, they already have Amazon account. And all data is in the place. And you can say, okay, this part of the skill is free. You can use it if you like it. You can uh, give me, I don't know, five bucks. And you can access this another uh, part of the skill with even more information. And they are getting fee. That all. But uh, Amazon also has a couple of uh, more serious programs. Uh, uh, Amazon uh, host for hospitality. Oh, so wow. You have, yeah, you have hotel and you have installed devices all around the place. And when you are developing for that stuff, uh, then you don't have even to have that invocation. Uh, you can uh, program that on a lower level. And they also have Amazon for, for business, 
for large corporations. And uh, for Amazon for Business, you are paying a per user account and per device to be able to use that yeah, Amazon for Business. It's really interesting. I didn't realize that the the, the so, grandeur of the, the whole project, really, you know, the fact that there's an enterprise. But it's it, it has, huge. Yeah, it has felt to me over the recent period with, with things like the acquisition of Roomba and so on, that really what, what, the, what these companies are trying to do is, is kind of create an OS for the home. So rather than it being bound to a computer and a screen, that more or less the, 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 the house with its multiple tendrils, you know, the device over here and the TV over there and the, um, the smart speaker over here, that the, the house itself will become an operating system, if you know what I mean. You can Star just... Trek. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's the vision. Star yeah. Trek is the vision. So in, in a, in it's, a sense, called, mm. it's called multimodal device, not just voice. So, and it kind of feels like, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, you'd be able to um, instruct your, I don't know, oven to turn on by speaking when you're upstairs in the bedroom, or you'd be able to get the, the kettle to boil, or, you know, all of these things, which sound a bit Star Trek, but all interconnected, the house being an operating system. Yeah. <clears throat> Give us some insight into what people have actually done already uh, with your WordPress plugin, because all of this sounds very grand and amazing, but it might be nice to sort of ground it a little bit and, and f just give us a few concrete examples of things which have already happened that, that mm -hmm. might give us some orientation. Uh, besides examples that we've done, and you can find them quite easily, uh, as I said, we have templates uh, when you create uh, when you are creating new skill, you have already done templates for playing music uh, and uh, trivia games and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also check on our blog uh, for a few more examples. Uh, we have one quite interesting thing. Uh, we have customer who built their system on the WordPress, formidable forms, uh, ultimate, ultimate membership plugin, cup, WooCommerce, plastic uh, WordPress, uh, huge website. And uh, they built their system for healthcare, for elder people uh, who are entering uh, those people or their family members. They can enter uh, blood pressure, uh, pulse, and those simple health information. They have a couple of more modules, uh, but, uh, and we created a skill. So they, when they want to enter that information and they want to do that couple of times of day, uh, they don't have to go on the computer uh, to enter that. Uh, they are doing that through Alexa. That's absolutely fascinating. And you can really understand why the voice interface in that exact scenario is the perfect interface. Um, yeah. Because you're just dealing with people there who it's going to be so much more convenient to say these things out loud than to fumble around and try and find a device and then find the right web page. Um, it's just right there. You just start speaking and you're done. Yeah. And uh, that, that's also... Uh one good example because they are doing that a couple of times of the, uh, per day. Yeah, and also I, I was just saying there that you you short circuit the process of finding the website. If I wanted to fill out the form with th that exact same data in, I would have to first of all pick up the device, navigate to the correct page, and I'd either have to remember the URL for that or do some kind of Google search load that page up, locate the form, and then start typing in the data. Whereas all of that discovery bit, once you've found that, that um, voice-enabled service, you can presumably access it again and again and go directly to it. So you don't have to do all the searching and fumbling around to find it. What's also interesting in our implementation, how we are doing these kind of uh, integrations uh, with uh, additional WordPress plugins, uh, the entry which is created uh, through Alexa is the equally uh, capable as the one entered through web. 
So what I want to say, uh, yeah, yeah, they have formidable forms. They have a couple of actions hooked up to that, uh, sending emails, uh, sending the data on another one place. Uh, so everything works same as they are doing uh, when they are doing through the web. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, isn't it? Because everything that we've described more or less until a couple of minutes ago uh, has been kind of working on the assumption that you're just doing one thing. You're interacting with one thing and it's giving you information back. But what you're saying is that the whole WordPress ecosystem, all of the different plugins, if you've got the, the Convo work system going, you can interact with those. So WooCommerce is in scope. Forms are in scope. All all of this stuff is in scope, uh, you know, and that just offers so much promise because of the massive ecosystem of plugins and functionality that WordPress has. Yes, uh, we don't have right now any direct integration uh, with uh, WooCommerce, uh, just to mention that. We have uh, generic components, for example, for accessing a database, okay. any table in the WordPress uh, for accessing both type data, uh, but this is, you know, uh, just direct database interaction. Yeah, so it's all within scope, and that's so, that's the yeah. point. Yeah, ev so everything's the, available, yeah. but maybe but not you, in the you, GUI. Yeah. You cannot you cannot just add new record in the database, because if you do that directly, you will miss out all those hooks and triggers that they are doing that. Yeah. So yeah. when we are trying yeah. to do integration, and right now, we have a couple of them. As I said, we have a couple of uh, scheduling appointment uh, plugins covered, and we have uh, just formidable forms from the form builders. We are actually uh, adding new package and new components, which are calling the functions from the plugin. And when we are creating entry, we are calling the plugin function create entry. So ensuring that everything triggers all right. So that's the idea. Yeah. To have full integration. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating subject. Unfortunately, we're kind of running out of time. So in order to in order to get in under the allotted time, I'm just going to ask you, is there anything that we didn't stray into that you thought at the outset that you would have liked to have talked about? And if so, just launch into that. Well, uh, I would just, uh, okay, this is it. Uh, we are right now mostly concentrated on Alexa, but uh, what we have also on mind for the future, uh, voice conversation is actually a chatbot with the microphone and speaker. So we can have, uh, we, we plan for the future to have a chatbot support. So you can have chatbot on your website. Uh, which is capable to really recognize your users uh, to uh, to 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 get most out of the system you already have. Uh, we are also planning to have on-site voice uh, search, so microphone on the web. So it's again just small extension to the chatbot. And there is also one thing which is very interesting uh, that Amazon supports. It's uh, HTML5 applications. And basically what we are doing in the web, everything is HTML5 right now. No? Yep. And uh, this is something that can come in the future. And uh, I think that the WordPress community uh, could uh, do a great things uh, with that because we are web guys, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a really interesting field. Like I said at the top of the show, it's not really one that I've strayed into before. I've firmly fixed myself with the screen and the computer, but the 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 op the uh, uh, options in the future, I think, are going to be extraordinary. It, it almost feels like we're just taking baby steps at the moment. We haven't really worked out where voice fits in our world and where it fits in our home and what we want it to be able to do. But um, it sounds very much like you're in this for the long haul. So uh, I'm just going to say one more time, go to convoworks.com, C-O-N-V-O-W-O-R-K-S.com. They've got a whole load of documentation, including um, tutorials on how to get started and, and really just sort of illustrating what all this is about, what's possible, how you might begin and so on. Um, 
Just want to ask you, very final question, where would we get in touch with you personally if we wanted to take this conversation a little bit further? You can find me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and uh, you can always use the contact form uh, on the website. Uh, so I'm responding to all inquiries. Okay. Uh, and uh, be free to con- reach us. Yeah, thank you very much. So, T. Hamir, thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed that chat. Thank you, Nathan, to having me here, and I really also enjoyed it. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that episode. It was very nice chatting to T. Hamir all about Convo Works. If you have any thoughts about that, whether you want to find out a little bit more, then please head over to the WP Builds website. You can find episode number 298 in the archive, which is in the menu at the top on the homepage, and write us a comment there. Alternatively, join our Facebook group, wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook. And don't forget that we'll be back on Monday. We've got another show. It's called This Week in WordPress. I'm joined each week, usually by three other guests, and it's very nice when people join in live in the commentary. And if you want to hear more about that, you can subscribe to our podcast, wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. Don't forget to share the Black Friday link, wpbuilds.com forward slash black. That's going to be your home page from now on for all things WordPress for Black Friday. That's it for this week, though. I'm going to fade in some cheesy music and say, stay safe. Bye bye for now. <laughs>